Ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Colin Ulrich. I'm Mangru. Low, low, low. And folks, uh, we promised you some more Red Storm 44 mods, and we will deliver on that today. Today, actually, on Orchard North, who do we have, Rang? Actually, I think we have somebody new, don't we? Well, on the left-hand side, in the blue, we have Atreides playing a brand new 20th Rothen SS Grenadier Division. And on the right-hand side in the red, we have a disheartened Eugene fan playing as Group Tyronia. So you said new. So talking about new, I noticed the Estonians over here, which is... I didn't look into the pedigree of the unit, but um, tell me more about what we see from them in this mod. Yeah, 20 FSS was just uh, added just last week. Uh, pretty interesting SS division. Well, interesting the way that they do have Estonians. In terms of equipment, it's pretty much a German, like, Grenadier division. It's really not that much special of them. Just Stugs, some Pack 40s, some pretty good infantry. I think their main standout, of course, is the copious amount of air power they have, as they have a lot of Fokker Wolves, which are very good in this mod. Yep, I am certainly prepared to get fucked in this particular replay, but um, how's that going to match up against Group Tyrannia? I yeah, mean, we know what the Tyrannia does at vanilla, but... Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. A lot of T-34-76s, which would be pretty good against a division that doesn't have a whole lot of tanks. But the main thing is they have some pretty nasty infantry as well. The Russian Sturmovikis are just bloody deadly in this mod. So it should be a pretty infantry-focused mm -hmm. fight, as both sides have... Not comparable, but it should be pretty interesting to see how they match up. I'm certainly fascinated, I know. I, I'm for, interestingly enough, a lot of the SS keyword on this is definitely going to go and cause some issues here. Because memory serves, that means it's a very, very minimal... Yes, the 35% stress resilience, that thing right there is just obscene. Yeah, and, most, and a lot of the units do have it because it's an SS unit. But as we're seeing down south, a treaties man to maneuver a Panzer boy turns snipe on a BA-64, which is quite nice. Anti-tank rifles are a really good call-in on this mod. And Disheartened does use a lot of these BA-64s. He's got one kind of like in the northern town here doing a bit of a aggressive reconnaissance. No, I was watching up to the north as this Stug 3 trying to engage the Zis 3, and, and not for nothing. Yeah, that's there was only really one way that was... Yeah. <laughs> it ended up exactly as I expected. <laughs> yeah, it didn't really have any reconnaissance in that Zis 3, so it's not much he can really do. Anti, just like in this mod, things are very stealthy. It's, you really need reconnaissance to spot most things, so you can't just be throwing tanks really nearly into unfamiliar terrain. No, unless you're Tyrannia, at which point terrain means absolutely very little. Mm hmm. Uh, but Penzibusha over here down south trying to engage both that basically T70 Comrati and the Vasvedka. This is not going to go well for him. Even with a, a three-star, it really shouldn't go too well. Yeah, the Panzerboyser is not the best anti-tank rifle. I mean, you really have to hit the side armor of those T70s to really do anything, but he does have a pretty nice hold in that forest with three SS Pioneer Scrotch in there, so he should be able to deal with the Ultimate Cheekies. His armor, however, the T70s is going to be a pain. He has no other anti-tank on his southern hill. You know, he should be able to deal with the Ultimate Cheekies, but I think it's only because of dint of numbers. He shouldn't, like, SS Pioneers, again, fantastic stress resilience, that kind of, like, die-hard kind of, you know, sticking in is going to be really, really great. But don't forget, veteran Ultimate Cheekies in the first place. I know it doesn't sound like much, but again, I'm pulling it up on my screen right now. 10 accuracy, 15% rate of fire, 15% stress resilience. That is a nasty piece of work, and that's on top of the fact that they're Ultimate Cheekies. Yeah, Russian SMGs are also very good in CQC. Pretty much how it goes in terms of CQC, the Russians have lots of submachine guns, where the Germans really rely more on flamethrowers and explosive charges to really form morale, because apart from the explosive charges, the SS Pioneers are pretty bad in CQC. That is certainly the case. Watching over here as one of the other kind of replacement strokes is trying to move a little bit further south and assert himself along the center line of this fight. And I, I can't help but agree with it. I feel like this is probably a better place for him and a much more appropriate place for him to be sitting. Yeah, I always like seeing people who try to push in the center of this map because it's, it is hard to push, to be fair, because it's a lot pretty open and the enemy hill does give him a good position to shoot you down from, but it's usually rather weakly defended, so if you do manage to make a consolidated push into the center, you can actually get a decent amount of ground. Certainly seems to be the case. I keep checking down there to see if there's going to be that rush that we're expecting in the southern forest. 
but it looks like it's more on the part of a treatise over here to kind of continue to be pestering some of these northernmost Soviet units. The T-60 Razvedka, not really with the same kind of benefits of the armor from the T-70, of course. And incendiary already, so... I always... The, the, the incendiary crit for me, it's always just kind of, like, minimal. Yeah, I think it just, like, stuns them for a little bit. Yeah, Panzer Boys are in a very nice spot. I mean, main thing is being able to most, I say, shoot the stuff while being hidden, but it's now been spotted. And he is having a rather nasty time. It's holy crap, that T60 shoots really fast. It shoots really fast, yes, but the damage to optics, which would have been a, re a reduction over there, both to line of sight as well as, I think it's actually given accuracy coming through. Um, but in the end, not enough to save him. Not enough indeed, but... Yeah, I feel like the Sergeant's meant to make good use of his light tanks here. I mean, a nice thing with his deck is that his tanks are going to be a little bit better for fire support. Especially just having light tanks out and about. The one problem with the 20th SS is that you really only have Stugs as your only armored unit. And even just having light armor can be extremely useful, especially in these hill fights where it's rather close quarters. Just having a cheap tank to be bulletproof and shoot some machine guns will prove to be more than useful. And I feel like down south we're going to be seeing an assault here soon from oh, Disheartened. Yes. He has a, a BM-8 and the mortar That's exactly setup. what I was gonna, hoping you were calling out right there, but I'm not sure it's even going to be necessary. I think by the time it gets there, most of these SS Grenadiers are going to have been shifted. The Sturmaviki Dozer is in the first place. Terrifying, even without the flamethrower. Yeah. And the triple A gun, yeah, the T60, the T70. We're seeing these SS Pioneers being brought around in a bit of a flanking maneuver, which I think is good, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. No, I can't, he still can't really deal with the armor, which is going to be the pain in the ass. I mean, they don't have anti tank grenades, so it's not like he can blow up his armor. Like, he, it's really just his light armor, and now his gas maxim is going to come in and really be a pain in the butt. Yeah, the gas maxim is probably just going to get Panzer Boist. It probably will, but the T-70 is, I think, the first target kind of priority there, so it's not going to shoot for that. Uh, that's, a, that's a shame. He definitely could have killed that unarmed car. And here comes the rocket artillery. Well, you know what they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Indeed there is, but... It... I, 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 I didn't realize that the targeting profile for that is just so tight. Unfortunately, it's so tight it didn't hit anything. <laughs> yeah, I think at close range it is pretty accurate, but... Yeah, it is kind of a shame that he didn't actually get any... You know, major kills here. The SS Pioneers now exposing themselves, but when you're getting shot at by four max and machine guns, I don't feel like you're going to be able to really able to do much. No, it seems highly doubtful. We're actually seeing the same kind of push up to the north as well, and almost the same kind of profile as we have AAA kind of being brought in to really just use against the infantry positions. What I am seeing, which is kind of strange, is uh, we only have one squad of bronies up top. We don't really see any kind of Soviet infantry there to support that push. Yeah, it's really just like a maxim to defend the point. And yeah, it's more of a defensive position up north at the scene. Also, just a quick note about the gas maxim AA. These are the ones being brought in the support tab, so they can only shoot at ground targets. They have no anti-aircraft capability. Yeah, but I think when push comes to shove, I'd rather have the max in the support, because I'd rather have that ground um, yep. movement here. Actually, we're going to see that really come back to bite them, because a Falkwolf's coming in, he's going after all of those vehicles in the north. And the 50kg, more than enough. And kills the <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah those Falkwolf's are so good. Even though it's a light bomb load, it's still enough to blow up tanks, because this is Red Storm. Bombs blow up tanks. And those Falker Wolves are extremely survivable, not just because of resilience, but their speed allows them to get in and out, even if there's a decent amount of anti air. And they're definitely going to be a pretty big uh, force multiplier, I believe, for Trentieth. They've got a second one being brought in this time with two big bloody rockets. Is he going to go after the T 34? I feel like that yep. will be the smart target. Yep. The question is if he hits, and I, I know how ridiculous that sounds, and that's the problem, oh, yeah. is that the, the rockets are a little bit less exact. I mean, they should be more exact, but they feel a little bit less exact overall. Yeah, he, he missed um, with that uh, salvo, yeah, and you really need to direct it. Forgive me, though, we actually have a, kind of like a squad over here, of SS Grenadiers moving behind Whoa. the front lines. It's 15-9. 
and yes, we're getting some bronies in. Yes, we're getting a T60 coming too. Excuse me, T70 in. But there's also this BM8 uh, that might be able to get picked off. Holy crap, the central, like, look in the center, we have like four sucks moving up here. Like, this is a crazy pussy of Matrice. is exactly what he needs to do. Really hitting the reek underbelly of Disheartened, and this the is really is gonna throw a wrench into the flanks. The problem is that there's a 45 mil that's just not gonna be engaged for a while because it's too deep in the forest. Yeah. So unless the Stug over here is gonna get, he's not gonna get out of line of sight. He's gonna get to go down. Well, with the, book, I imagine. the 45 mil is out of AP ammo because the 45 mils oh, have geez. very limited AP ammo in this mod. It's mainly just it, they really just use them more as a high explosive support gun, which sounds bad, but honestly they're pretty good support guns. Oh my god, I forgot how ridiculous Brony uh, Boshkis are, or Boshikis are. Jeez. Yep. Yeah, this entire center is completely ruptured. How the heck did this happen? I know, and this is by, like, a slow and steady infantry division. This isn't any, like, crazy mechanized post. It's really just the Stugs. I guess you could say his opponent's a little bit stuck in the mud. <laughs> yes, Khan. Yes, he is. But, yeah, this is, this is fantastic. I mean, we're seeing Disheartened having to counterattack now with a bunch of tanks being brought in, but he doesn't really have much reconnaissance to spot these SS Grenadiers in the forest, which will definitely prove to be a pain in terms of routing them out. Well, right now the 45 mil, yeah, he's got the HE to engage the infantry, but um, the infantry's going to bedevil him quite a bit. Yeah. Hopefully the Stug is going to have the correct targeting decision. Your tank commander kill, that's not going to be good for him right there. We might see a dead Stug pretty quickly. He was killed, now he's knocked out. Is he killed or is he knocked <laughs> out? Like... A, that's a weird bug, because yeah, you shouldn't be able to get the knockout if your tank commander's already dead. Maybe he was resuscitated really quickly and then he like fell asleep. Well, let's also not forget that this is still Red Storm where all the infantry has anti-tank grenades. I uh, mean, sort of. Mostly. Sort of. But I mean, it can still be pretty good. Well, like right now, if that T-3476 continues to move forward, there's still an SS Grenadier that has the potential to force a pretty quick surrender. Um, also worth mentioning, though, up top, we have this entire Russian kind of attack group that's going through, which theoretically should be getting a lot more territory than it it's is. It's a leader unit. Yes, and that's the thing that I was going to make the comment about, is that they have this Pioneer Fuhrer over here that's keeping things kind of at bay. Yeah. Of course, if the Airsets Grenadiers go down, that's going to be a different story. Yeah. He also has, like, quite a bit of reconnaissance units which don't affect the front line, so that's definitely hurts him out a bit. And that's the thing of Red Storm is that you really have to be, like, pretty thorough and clear in forest because it's very easy for, a, you know, a pioneer, you know, an infantry unit here and there to just not get spotted. I can definitely vouch for that in plain. There's a certain Red Storm match where it's like, oh, I, I moved up, but I don't have the front line. There must be partisans in my rear. Well, in the meantime, we are going to see that two cars, two planes go. I'm sorry, oh. one plane goes in and takes out two vehicles. We all in the center. Stug, uh, the Befehler Stug, gets hit a little bit for right now, but who cares? It's still 16-8, and here is we need some rocket attacks or some gun runs. No gun runs. Okay. Yeah, yeah if a treaty can get some more units into that northern hill, he should be able to very easily consolidate it. He does have two pack 38s, and he's definitely on. I don't know if they were in the defensive position before, or if he just brought them up, but they definitely have a little bit of a rock to go to get into a good position in the center, so that's going to be a bit of a shame, but he still has the Stugs, he has a very good hold in the center of just some of these Ursanch Grenadier holding the point here, so he's not doing bad, I mean, it's a 16-8. I was actually thought you were talking about the, the, the basically the 28mm Pentaposha Einum Fiatzigs up top, um, with the APCR shells. Oh yeah, that's a funny little unit, yeah. It is, it, you know, and the, one of the squads is crewed by John Doe. <laughs> oh, I think that's a uh, naming bug. I think all the Estonians are called John Doe because he, there's no uh, Estonian names added yet. I believe that's a oh my gosh, that's something funny. you have to add. Wow, stolen yeah. valor. But by who, really, is the I question. Know. Oh, we got Heinzko down south. I believe he. I don't know if he killed something or not, but it doesn't matter for him because he is going to die. He certainly is going to die. I'm actually going to check up here to the top, though. Again, we have another Falk Wolf coming in, and he might kill his own troops with this, but he will almost certainly take out the T70. There you yeah. go. The wing oh, ripped off. Whoa. Jeez. I think that's pretty detrimental to your flying ability. <laughs> 
Is he a monoplane, or he's just, he's he's wearing his stars <laughs> of pride? Uh, the BM8 over here in the center is going to try to go and find that Befeyla Strug, but I don't think he's going to be able to do that. Again, he's going about the same distance from the front lines, and he's very precise about what he's hitting. Again, I am intensely impressed by the lack of spread on these. I imagine he would want just a smidge more than what he's got, though. Yeah. The rocket artillery is... It can definitely be very powerful, but of course you'd really have to be... You know, it, 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 you know it's more accurate, so you have to be a little bit more... You know, concerned. But anyway, the SS Grenadier, I mean, man's in the hold out point still, pretty damn impressive, and of course the infantry unit being brought in just got sniped by the Stug. Yeah, I was going to say that, that helps quite a bit there. Yeah. Uh, of course, the Comrati, if the Comrati goes down, then that point is completely in the control of hostage treaties. Yeah. Those SS yeah. Grenadiers are actually pretty decent, because they do have two PPSHs, which Definitely improves their firepower quite a bit compared to regular German Grenadiers. True. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Of course, the stress was Oh yeah, and if you look up north, the uh, SS uh, Grenadiers with the Panzerfaust actually has the Czech submachine gun, the ZK-383, which is also a very cool SMG. There's some pretty cool, uh, just like, you know, flavorful weapons here for the Estonians. Oh, with the SS Grenadiers, for some reason I was having such a weird... Wait, where's the check machine gun? Uh, SS Grenadier, Grenadier Panzerfaust on the northern runs moving up, to, up on the hill. Oh, there we go. Okay, yep. I was looking at the light machine gun. I was like, that's an MG34, my friend. <laughs> um, I was like, it's been a yep. while since I've seen one live, but yep. pretty sure. Uh, down south, I'm actually surprised that Tirania over here has not made a more concerted effort to either punch through or to maybe try to pinch off this piercing that they've got going on here. Yeah, I feel like he's been much more focused in the center just due to that rupture in his lines that he hasn't been able to really master the forces to continue southern assault, which is pretty good for him because, you know, if he does get a little bit more armor, he can just deal with all the grenadiers. There's really not much crazy anti-tank apart from some Panzerfaust here and there. But, you know... Having to try and recapture the center is really screwing them over and pushing these flanks. So that does seem to be the case. I'm watching as the northern side of the Soviets gets kind of picked off. Yes, there's one veteran of Machiki up here. And yes, he's going to take his pound of flesh, but it's really just about two models. Ooh, and there's another Focke Wolf. Okay. Flow carburetor failure. Good, good plan. Let's get out of there. Yeah. And now, we actually do have an 85 mil in the center part of the field, so that might cause some hassles for that Stugbefehle. But already, disheartened Eugene fan, he's he's kind of in a pickle here. Yeah, I mean, he just lost so much territory in the center without really having to, you know, fight for it. It's just a few units, but now, if he wants to counterattack the center, he has to go through quite a bit. I mean, you have two SS Pack 38s. In that one forest, the northern hill is getting reinforced by some more infantry. Like, it's going to be quite a bit of a fight if he wants to retake his land. And that's going to be a huge pain in the arse while also having to defend his flanks. And as we see up north, the treaty he's bringing in the uh, Flam Panzer Pioneers, who are also have explosives. He has the Sturm of Ikis in the forest, which are also very good against the Flam Panzers. But it's just way too much Estonians up north. That's true. That's true. Which means the disheartened Eugene fan has got to fight for his right to have a communist party. Yeah. Yes, sir. Down south, we're just checking back in over here. All's quiet on the southern front, although it looks like the property values are definitely continuing to fall. Inside that um, forest, now we have <laughs> the MG08s. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so the ridiculous POS is that's going on there. But it's tartened. They're using like a bloody World War One machine gun. Yeah, and, and you know, you want to go and make fun of it completely, but they don't have to hold the ground forever. They just have to hold it. <laughs> they have to hold it longer than the other guy. Yeah, and honestly, having this hard and machine gun teams is not that bad because they're usually going to be shooting infantry out of range, so you know they're a little bit more survivable. They're not like you're mm -hmm. assaulting with them; you're playing them much more defensively. Interestingly, these Focke Wolves up north have been absolutely stellar. 
37 mil can't get after both. He's going to go after the southern one with the rockets, which I think is probably no, not what they was really hoping for. Yeah. But both are going to get the load off, and I think the rockets is a blind fire to see if there's anything yeah. in the area, but of course there wasn't. But still, it's only f like three Soviet units here, so this would be pretty easy to take out, even though he doesn't really have any armor. You know, it's just at 1 T-16, and he's pretty much tracked. Well, and, and honestly, too, the Flam pa uh, Pioneers mean more than enough. Yeah, just get an easy surrender. That's one. Maxim's gonna engage the Flam Pants moving out over the open field. He's, he doesn't even see the Brony. Oof. Sneaky Brony. Oh, my little Brony. Poor guy. <laughs> I'm not sure he's gonna last very long. Um, Maxim's not gonna last very long either, jeez. Uh, looking over here in the center, shockingly enough, we haven't seen a whole lot of Soviet air power, which is really weird. Befela Stug does go down, but big deal. I mean, again, he held that middle territory for a long period of time, and it's 16-8. Yeah, it's been like a pretty constant 16-8. Atreides has done a very good job of, you know, re -secu securing that central push. Like, I was asking Christ Bryce, he hasn't got kicked off that hill yet, but I think just being able to push up north as well has, you know, really... Divert and dishearten Eugene's fans' attention all over the map. He can't be able to concentrate in one area for too long. That's true. I do think Atreides got by with a little help from his Fremen, though. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and just this northern post of all the Estonian infantry is. Well, it's going pretty well, but the Sturm Superior is coming in clutch here. Oh, and absolutely. And he's doing a pretty damn good job. Oh, the Flam Pioneers coming in for the flank. Oh, yeah, I also have machine guns, so they should be in a pretty good position to deal with the Sturm Superiors. So, some friendly fire there. It does <laughs> got a fair chunk of the Pioneers. And they kind of, bizarrely enough, there's been very, very little anti-air. There's been, like, if there's one, there was one SDKFZ in the middle part of the field. We actually see a couple other ones coming to the northern side right now. But other than that, next to no... Next to no anti-air. Yeah, I I'm think he... the pack already assert himself. There we go. I think it just hasn't been that much air power from the Soviets until now, so he hasn't really seen a need to. But where well, it's only like 25 seconds left, and I think it's pretty clear that Atreides will be taking the victory. But I guess here's the question: It was because that Tirani is weak against the Estonians. Oh uh, no! I th that it was okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, I think it was because he just did that lovely push in the center. Like, that, that really caught Dishart and Eugene off guard, and even with a pretty slow division such as the Estonians, he managed to put pressure on all flanks to keep Dishart and Eugene fans from really concentrating in one area. And also just the aircraft plays have been really on point. He exploited his fucker offs perfectly. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Looking, looking at the KD, rather meager levels of death here, all things considered. Zis 3 getting a couple of good Stug kills. Um, Yak 9 picking up a 1, we got a ground kill at the same time. Yeah, I mean, we have some small moments of, of brilliance over here from the Soviet side. Bergman did very well, the Falkwolf got 2 kills, the, another Falkwolf got 2 kills. Hench okay, so the Henschel got 1, Vezved got down to the south before he went down. Yeah. Yeah, nothing really crazy. Everyone was kind of, you know, working together. They were, you know, it's pretty good at a treaty still man's ring with a negative KD ratio. But, hey, it's not about the kills. It's about gaining territory. That's true. If you pay for that pound of flesh, what are you getting for it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a really lovely match. Uh, like, two very cool infantry divisions going at it. I, I do love casting these Red Storm games. It's... There's so much tactical, like, variety and just interesting interactions, especially in the infantry fights. It really makes it, like, really cool. Like, I, I love I love casting these matches, Khan. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, and it's it's great just to see more and more development for this thing, too. I, we gush constantly about seeing the things in the vanilla game, but I love this mod because it gives that moment into the sun to the rather, the rather overlooked people, so... Yeah, and Mr. Chris has done a very good job of, like, I mean, these were added pretty recently as Railroad's 11th SS division. A little bit different from the vanilla run, but, you know, all the divisions that have been added, yes, is less than the vanilla game, but the divisions are frankly just much more interesting and much better built compared to uh, vanilla ST2 divisions. True. 
Sure. But I suppose for right now, congratulations to Atreides. Uh, I guess disheartened. Get, Eugene fan gets a little more disheartened, but um, <laughs> he's not surrendered yet. So he's got, no. still got one step up in the air side shooting for that. Uh, any final thoughts, sir? Nope. Well, folks, we got some more Restroom 44 material coming your way over here on Thursday, so be sure to check it on out. Until then, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.